American Goldfinch. Northern Cardinal. Red-tailed hawk. Western tanager. Tweet, tweet! No birds here. All the birds. I must have scared it. You're back. I have that water sample. What do I do with it? Just give it to me, and I'll take care of it. Thanks for all your help. Not a problem.
You find all the birds? I found some birds, but no matter how quiet I am, I've been scaring other birds away before I can take their picture. What am I doing wrong? You're wearing those clothes. That's what you're doing wrong. You need to blend in, like me. Go back over to M's tacky tourist trap and get yourself some camouflage gear. Only sensible thing that money grubber carries. I'm sorry to keep bugging you, but I need some sandpaper. Emily said you might have some. Here, take it and scram. I was just about to call in a meadowlark. That was always Ruth's favorite. Was Ruth Good your wife? Good heavens, no. My wife had no patience for birding. Ruth was my dog. Border Collie. She'd hear a meadowlark, and by golly, her ears would perk, and she'd cock her head, and she'd just come as close to smiling as ever a dog could. Do many people around here own dogs? Not really. Most people don't bother. The place is surrounded by park land, and Ranger Acres just loves enforcing the leash laws. There it is again. Take your sandpaper and go... sand something, okay? It's stuck. be mice making that sound. It looks like a tiny hole. I wonder if he's related to Jeff Akers. Hey, Sally, it's Nancy. Nancy, hi, how's it going? Talk to you later. Stay in touch. We're sorry, your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please check... Hello? 
Bess, it's Nancy. I know that. What's going on? Moon Lake is gorgeous, but it's so remote. The park ranger is the closest thing they have to a sheriff around here. Park ranger? What's he like? Which, as we all know, is Bess's way of saying, park ranger? Is he cute? Not true, George. Nancy thinks everybody's cute, so what would be the point? Anyway, Nancy, you were saying? Well, he seems like an okay guy, but frankly, nobody around here seems to like him very much. Why is that? He takes his job very seriously, which tends to rub some people the wrong way. Did you tell him about the ghost dogs? He thinks they're just plain old dogs that for some reason like to run around at night scaring people. And what does Detective Drew think about the dogs? I think Sally had good reason to be scared of them. I don't blame her for leaving, which leads me to think that maybe that was the whole idea. Somebody had those dogs attack Sally in order to scare her away? Why would anybody do that? She was there for less than a month. You'd have to be a total creep to make enemies that fast. And Sally's one of the nicest people I know. Ooh, Nancy! Speaking of cute guys, Frank and Joe Hardy called. I filled them in on where you are and what you're doing, and they're dying to hear from you. Oh, yeah? <laughs> what are they up to? Compared to you, nothing. As I was telling them about this latest case of yours, I could hear them turning green with envy right through the receiver. Their number is 280-555-4865. Bess didn't recognize it when they called and almost didn't answer the phone. Good thing my cousin here has a memory like an elephant, huh? What's that supposed to mean? Call them, Nancy. They're dying to hear from you. But remember, Frank's cute and all that, but George and I want to hear from you, too. Yeah, no fair discussing the case with them from now on and not with us. Promise you'll keep us up to speed? <laughs> I promise. This bird watcher I met has got me taking pictures of birds for some survey he's doing. He's a bit of a grump. Does he live nearby? No, he just kind of hangs out in the woods. In fact, I only see him at night. Interesting. He's in the woods at night. The dogs are in the woods at night. Could he have had a reason for wanting Sally out of the Malone house? As far as I know, he and Sally were on good terms. But I also know that Red doesn't seem to have much use for any life form that doesn't molt. He sounds like my uncle Zack. He's into birds. Only he doesn't watch them. He hunts them, then shoots them. I never really liked my Uncle Zack. Did I mention that all the water in Sally's house comes from a well? Ew, really? Does it taste like rotten eggs? Not all well water tastes like rotten eggs, Bess. I don't know if it does or not. Because the well is so old, I need to get the water tested before I drink it. Good plan. Nothing will wreck your day faster than a nice tall glass of contaminated water. I found the coolest old newspaper. It's from 1927, and on the front page is an article about Mickey Malone and a man named William Akers. Akers? Any relation to park ranger Jeff Akers? I haven't asked him yet, but according to the newspaper, William Akers was Mickey Malone's most trusted employee, his number one go-to guy. Where'd you find it? That's something else that's pretty cool. Don't tell me you found a secret passageway. Close. I found hidden stairs leading from the living room into the cellar. What's down there? That's what's weird. The stairs led down into this empty space. There's some kind of safe in the wall and a set of stairs leading to a door that goes outside, but that was it. Hmm. Why would Malone bother hiding a staircase if it didn't go somewhere important? Bye, you guys. Ta-ta. Ciao for now. Hello? Hey, Joe. It's Nancy. Nancy? How's it going? Uh, no, wait. Don't answer that. Talk about the weather or something. The weather? Yeah. That'll give me time to grab the other phone and take it outside. Frank's washing the car. He'll kill me if he misses anything. Uh, here, wait a sec. Take a break. It's Nancy. Hang on. He's putting the hose down. He's drying his hands. He's walking over. Nancy, hi. What's up? Bess and George say you've got another mystery on your hands. Or should we say, on your paws. They told you about the dogs? We made them tell us everything. Pumped them dry. As you may have guessed, we're not exactly rolling in detective work here. So you're living vicariously through me. It's not the first time, sad to say. What conclusions have you reached so far, detective? If nothing else, those ghost dogs are very well trained. I'm watching to see who owns and or trains dogs around here. Good plan, but don't forget, a really smart perpetrator is going to make it look like he or she has no connection to dogs whatsoever. But then a really, really smart perp might have dogs all over the place and not bother to hide it, because he or she would figure you'd never suspect anyone so obvious. 
That bird watcher doesn't have a dog. And when I met him for the first time, he seemed awfully eager to make sure I knew the story about Malone and his dogs. Sounds like a suspect to me. Bess said something about a good-looking park ranger? Park ranger Jeff Akers. What do you think? Does a uniform make a person more suspicious or less suspicious? I'm sure my brother here would say a uniform automatically makes somebody more suspicious. Because most people assume that a uniform makes the wearer less suspicious. Right, Joe? Right. Of course, then again, your really, really smart perp is going to Joe. We get the picture. I'm convinced that someone is using those ghost dogs to scare Sally into abandoning Malone's house. If I can just figure out why, I might be able to figure out who. Never hurts to look for motive. Malone and his four dogs are supposedly buried in a little cemetery near the house. They've all got headstones inscribed with when they were born and when they died. That's interesting. Did Malone have family? Not that I'm aware of. Then who had the tombstones inscribed? I don't know, but it had to be someone who had access to Malone's house and property after he died. Sounds like this latest puzzle of yours is still missing a few pieces. Later, guys. See ya. You're back. I found a newspaper dating back to 1927 in Sally's house. Since you're kind of an expert on the history of Moon Lake, do you mind if I ask you some questions about Mickey Malone? Not at all. The article mentioned that a man named William Akers used to work for Malone. Is he a relative of yours? No. Quite a coincidence, I'll admit, but no. I am in no way related to the head flunky of some two-bit gangster and his gang of thugs. I found this old picture in Sally's house. Do you know who these people are? The man is Mickey Malone, I know that. I'm guessing that this is his girlfriend, Vivian Burnett, I think her name was. And judging by the year of that brand new Ford in the background, I'd say the picture was taken in 1928. She was probably as familiar with Malone's house and his dogs as he was. Think there's any chance she's still alive? Tell you what, Miss Drew. Why don't I go through my files and see what I can dig up on this mystery woman? I'm a busy man, but like I always say, I'm here to serve. When and why was Malone arrested? I'm sorry, Miss Drew. As usual, I'm a little pressed for time. If you have more questions... Why don't you sit down at the computer and peruse the Moon Lake database of fascinating factoids that I've put together? What happened to Akers and the rest of Malone's gang after he went to prison? <laughs> Fortunately for Moon Lake, they all left and went their separate ways. I've been trying to take pictures of birds for this guy named Red Knot. Ever met him? Oh, yes. The bird man. I'd stay away from him if I were you. Why? Is something wrong with him? He's a fanatic. He's got it in his head that Moon Lake would be the best bird-watching venue in the world except for one thing. Too many people. Believe me, if there was a way to get this park shut down and all the homes on the lake torn down, he'd do it in an instant. Have you gotten the results back from that water sample I left with you? I meant to call the Department of Health today for a status report, but frankly, I've been way too busy. How long have you been the Lone Ranger here, as it were? Six long, very frustrating years. If I were in charge of just ten more acres of parkland, they'd give me an assistant, and I could devote more time to the acquisition of more land and eventually put Moon Lake on the map as one of the biggest, most popular parks in the state. Why didn't the Parks Department buy the Malone property instead of Sally? She outbid them, the cheapskates. Well, if those dogs scare Sally away for good, other people are bound to think twice about buying the place. The bank will lower its price, and you'll have your land. You're insinuating things again, Miss Drew. I didn't mean to insult you. In fact, is there anything I can do to help you out? Tell you what, if you're serious about making amends, there's some boxes by the computer labeled with dates. They're from the estate of a local history buff. 
She kept everything from newspaper clippings to old photos to recipes for apple crisp. She put everything in envelopes, then numbered them by year using Roman numerals. Just put the envelopes in order by year with the earliest date in front. Oh, and if you're rusty on Roman numerals, there's an entry on them in the computer. Okay, if I read what's in the envelopes? Don't go reading anything until you're through, or take my word for it. You'll never get finished. Thanks for all your help. Not a problem. Let's see. Jeff said the envelope with the earliest date goes down in the front of each box. Now that they're all sorted, I can do some reading. You're back. I noticed you have a dog. <laughs> That's Yogi, who never goes out unless he's on a leash. Park rules. Do you have any other dogs? I hope you're not suggesting I trained Yogi to run around in the middle of the night barking and attacking houses. I finished putting all those envelopes in order. Excellent. Thank you, Miss Drew. And to show my gratitude, I've got something for you. It doesn't involve Roman numerals, does it? No, it's an honorary Junior Park Ranger pin. I keep them on hand so I can give them out to children whom I see demonstrating respect for park rules and regulations. A little bit of positive reinforcement. Unfortunately, I don't get to give them out that often. Oh, gee, thanks, Ranger Acres. Thanks for all your help. Not a problem.
Nice Junior Park Ranger pin. You must really be on Aker's good side. Any word from Tucker What's-His-Name? He hasn't been by to move that tree yet. I'll give him another call. But like I said, the man marches to the beat of another drummer. A very slow drummer. I found an old newspaper in Sally's house that contained an article on Mickey Malone. It really got my curiosity going. What else can you tell me about him? Person you should talk to is Jeff Akers. He's got this historical museum thing going out at that ranger station of his. How do I get to the museum? Just up Lake from Sally's on the east side. To make a long story short, I need some camouflage gear. Got some right over here. One size fits all. But I'm running kind of low on bait. So if you go out and get me, oh, say, a dozen little critters, I'll give you the camos. You got a deal. So what kind of bait do you need? Worms, spiders, beetles, grubs. Anything that wriggles on its belly will do. Just look under stuff. Rocks, logs, dead leaves. Should be able to find 12 in no time. Do I need some kind of permit? Things ain't quite that bad around here. At least not yet. Now, if Jeff Aker's daddy was still around, you might get arrested for cruelty to animals or some such nonsense. Joe Akers used to be the deputy sheriff. Real critter lover, that one was. Joe Akers is Jeff's father? That's right. Guess I'll see you later. Keep on trucking. like a tiny hole. What's the combination? I bet those were deer mice. Speakeasy. Joe Akers? Emily said Jeff Akers' father was named Joe. Maybe Jeff is related to William Akers after all. The dogs will lead the way. I wonder what that means.
Good news. I have information on your mystery woman. You are incredible, Ranger Acres. What did you find out? Her name these days is Vivian Whitmore. She lives in Las Vegas, and her number is 702-555-9137. Where's Yogi? In the run, out back. Even out of sight, he's under my full control, as park rules require. What do you know about a man named Joe Akers? Why do you ask? I understand he used to be the deputy here. So? According to Emily Griffin, Deputy Joe Akers was your father. And according to the journal I found, William Akers' son was named Joe. Another coincidence? All right, all right. William Akers was my grandfather. And you don't want anyone to know that. It's not exactly something I'm proud of. My father spent his whole life trying to make people forget what my grandfather was and trying to make sure people who didn't know what he was never found out. I've been doing the same thing. What did William Akers do after Malone was arrested? I'm afraid you're going to have to excuse me, Miss Drew. In case you've forgotten, I'm a very busy man. I apologize for my previous behavior. As a park ranger, I strive to keep my personal feelings in check at all times, and that time I failed. It's my duty as a public servant to try to make it up to you. What would you like to know? What can you tell me about the gold that Malone supposedly buried on his property? As far as I know, it doesn't exist. It's just one of those rumors people want to believe, so they do. Thanks for all your help. That's why I'm here. Hello there. Did your grandfather ever find any gold on Malone's property? If he did, he never spent it. He wasn't poor when he died, but he certainly wasn't rich. Sorry to bother you again, but did those results from the water test come in yet? Well, there's something here for you from the State Department of Health. Oh my gosh, not only is the water bad, but it seems like the well may have been contaminated deliberately. I wouldn't go jumping to conclusions without proof, Ms. Drew. I'm sure there's a far less melodramatic explanation. Thanks for all your help. That's why I'm here. If you're selling something, hang up right now. I got an air horn in my hand that could deafen a dinosaur, and I'm not afraid to use it. Oh, no, no, please. I'm not selling anything. Believe me. Is this Vivian Whitmore? Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. You got exactly five seconds to state your business. My name is Nancy Drew. I'm calling from Moon Lake, Pennsylvania. I just wanted to ask you some questions. All right. The Moon Lake Park Ranger said you might call, but you have to talk fast. An old friend of mine is flying in today from Florida. And when I say old, I mean old, as in five years older than I am. Don't bother trying to do the math, sweet stuff. You'll hurt yourself. So, that ranger fella said you found an old picture of me. It was of you and Mickey Malone. Do you remember him? Of course I remember him. I remember everything about that time of my life. It was the roaring 20s for crying out loud. One of the most exciting decades in American history. Just because I've got a few years on most people doesn't mean my brain's turned to tapioca, sweet stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. Mickey and I dated for five years. Oh, I knew what he was, and I didn't approve, believe you me. But I was young, and we got along so well, and he was so considerate. He always kept birch beer on tap at that speakeasy of his just for me. Do you know anything about the safe that's in the cellar of his house at Moon Lake? You must be talking about the wall safe. That was Willie's. He was a guy who worked for Mickey. 
Did all Malone's employees have their own safes? Not hardly. Mickey treated most of his employees like dirt, but not Willie. He honestly liked Willie, trusted him. And when Willie decided he wanted his own safe, Mickey said, what the hey? No one knew the combination, not even Mickey. Mostly because Willie was constantly changing it. He was a little paranoid and superstitious. Well, as I recall, he picked the most unlucky number he could think of and used that for the combination. He called it a reverse jinx. Unlucky number? Like what? Oh, like the date that something bad happened. Like when the stock market crashed, or when somebody died, or the address of a house that caught fire, or the phone number of the police, that sort of thing. What can you tell me about Malone's speakeasy? It was in the basement, right there at Moon Lake. Feds never knew about it, but everybody who was anybody on the East Coast back then, actors, musicians, bankers, politicians, they knew. You weren't big time unless you'd made at least one trip to Moon Lake Mickey's. That's weird. I'm staying in his old house on Moon Lake, and I haven't seen any sign of a speakeasy. Of course you haven't. You're not supposed to. Only Mickey and Willie knew how to get into the speakeasy from the house. The rest of us had to go in and out the regular way, through the cemetery. The cemetery? There was a lock hidden in one of the tombstones in that little cemetery behind the house. You needed a key to unlock it, and when you did, stairs would appear that led to the speakeasy. Do you have any idea how to get into Malone's speakeasy from the house? I sure don't. That saloon was built using two main ingredients, concrete and secrecy. Mickey always bragged that nobody could get in unless he wanted them in, and I do believe he was right. But I'll tell you what, if you sent me that picture of me and Mickey, I'll send you my key. The key to the tombstone? You still have it? It's in the bottom of my jewelry box. I've come this close to throwing it out a hundred times, but it's so small and the memories it brings back are so big, well, I just couldn't. As a joke, Mickey had a tombstone made with the name of this federal agent who had it out for him inscribed on it. That's the one the key unlocks. William Akers, the guy you call Willie. He wrote about looking for the gold that Malone had supposedly buried on his property at Moon Lake. Do you know anything about that? The hole in the floor gold heist. Well, I'll be darned. So it's true? He did bury gold on his property? truth be told. When Mickey told me he was the one who pulled off that heist and that he'd buried 20 gold bars at Moon Lake, I didn't believe him. I thought he was making it up. See, Mickey and I were on the outs by then. I thought he was just trying to entice me to come back. But if he told Willie the same thing, maybe there's something to the story after all. Do you have any idea where he might have hidden it? Afraid not. Mickey was so secretive that the men who completed his house at Moon Lake were not only forbidden to talk about the work they'd done, but they were ordered to leave the state for good or else. But you know, I think he mentioned a map. Yes. He said he was making a treasure map and that... The dogs. Something about those dogs of his. The dogs will lead the way? He was always saying that. In fact, I'm pretty sure he had it engraved on his tombstone. Think, Viv, think! He said he was making a treasure map, and that he was also having paintings done of each dog. He made it sound like one thing had something to do with the other, like he was giving me some big important clue. But I just figured he was playing games, trying to lure me back with mystery and intrigue. I told him to buzz off. Maybe I shouldn't have. Did he say what he was going to do with the paintings? He said he was going to hang them in the speakeasy, and I'm sure that's precisely what he did. Can you remember anything about Malone's dogs that might suggest where he hid the gold? I stayed away from his dogs. They made me nervous, always jumping around, barking at this or that. The only one I liked was, uh, oh, what was his name? Iggy. I liked Iggy because he was nice and quiet. He just lay on the porch all day and didn't make a peep. It's been fun talking to you. Anytime.
Hello? Hey, Sally. It's Nancy. Nancy, hi. How's it going? I'm afraid I have some bad news. I had your well water tested, and according to the health department, it contains a very high level of arsenic. Arsenic? Somebody poisoned my well? Maybe, maybe not. The health department is running more tests. When you bought the house, did anyone mention a problem with the well? No. And it doesn't matter. I love that house, and I am going to live in it. If that well's bad, I'll just dig another one. At least, I will when I know for sure why bad things keep happening there. You are going to figure that out, right, Nancy? You bet I am. I knew I could count on you. Were you ever told that Mickey Malone supposedly buried a small fortune in gold bullion somewhere on your property and that it has yet to be found? Is this a joke? It's probably just a rumor, but on the off chance that it isn't, do you have any idea where he could have hidden it? Uh, no. Could it be true? Well, if somebody thinks it's true, that may be the reason they're trying to frighten you off your property. How did you hear about it? I found the journal of a man named William Akers in a safe in your cellar. He was one of Malone's closest associates. Ever hear of him? Never. In the paperwork that you had to wade through when you bought this property, do you recall ever coming across the name Vivian Whitmore? No, I sure don't. Who's she? A close friend of Mickey Malone's, or so it would seem. Her name wasn't anywhere on the deed. I know that. Talk to you later. Keep me posted.